Hey, future bestsellers, Lisa Daly here. Do you wanna know the biggest secret to make your author newsletter a success? Well, stay tuned, because I'm talking to Newsletter Ninja herself, and she's gonna spill the tea. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Lisa Daly. If you wanna write a book you are super proud of and get it published, this is the channel for you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because I'm gonna be producing a lot of great videos to help you do just that and I don't want you to miss a thing. So here's the final part of my interview with the newsletter ninja herself, Tammy Lebrecht. No matter how many times I go through a book, after I hit that publish button, I'll go, oh, you know what I should have done, blah. So is there a blah moment um, for newsletter ninja too? The only place that I could see that I would have had one of those moments was in the appendix with the inclusion of the sample reader mm -hmm. magnets. Mm -hmm. um, and I averted that by just making it a link to a page. That's a living page. I've added a few things since then. That's um, great. If I see something really cool, I'll go ahead and add that as well. There's a section at the bottom that's just like unusual stuff, stuff that isn't, you know, there's prequels, there's side stories, there's whatever. And then there's like, this stuff is nuts, man. Um, Ariel Zoel's um, visual guides, I cannot gush about enough. They're so brilliant for that exact super fan building thing. Um, Chris Niles gives away audio of her reader magnet. It's it's only like an hour and 15 minutes or something. So it wasn't okay. terribly expensive to produce, um, which then enables her to tag audio listeners and target them when those books come out. Um, there's a, there's a, there's at least one dossier in there. There's some, um, there's a magazine, like a glossy magazine that, because the people in the book produce it, like that's what they do. That's their job is they work at this Love magazine. That. So they've got the magazine in there. Like there's all kinds of cool ones that are really fun. I like the clever ones, but also you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you're writing romance, write an extended epilogue for every single book, every single book. Sorry. You just have to make it 3000 words. No one cares. And put that up on you know book funnel or story origins and pull those people in um and then you can just make one or two you know really good either you know stranger facing or um convertible cookies that you can use for people who don't know you yet i love i love that expression convertible cookie because <laughs> I, stole it right from someone and I can't remember who i feel so bad <laughs> It's well, you do say that in the book, so perhaps that person will come forward. But I always uh, so, and for those of you who do not remember uh, from earlier in the interview, a convertible cookie is a cookie that is appealing to both existing readers and new readers. But the funny thing is, the entire time I was reading about convertible cookies, I kept imagining you know, if you go to like a gourmet bakery, how they have those cookies that are like half dipped in chocolate. <gasps> That's what I visualize. Every, these crazy expensive cookies half dipped in chocolate. That's a convertible cookie. I love it. They've been throwing around the term convertible cookie in my um, Facebook. I have a, a Facebook group for the Newsletter Ninja crowd. And uh, they've been throwing that term around in there. And I'm like, I love it. Look at me. Look at this. You guys, you're <laughs> awesome. Everyone's going to be saying this soon. And then it'll look like I stole it from someone. I did steal it from someone. But I don't know who. Um, but yes, I love. I actually really like... That to me is just kind of the pinnacle because it lets you kill two birds with one stone. Like mm -hmm. I just have to write the one cookie and it can do all the jobs and that's awesome. Or at least just one cookie for every trilogy or every series. Or right. if you're writing um, in any of the speculative fiction stuff where you're doing a lot of world building, you can usually get away with one cookie per world even, you know, a prequel. And then you've got, you know, three trilogies set in that world or however it works. You can often do that. Um, Right. Jamie Davis, I mentioned his uh, Charm Runner series and how he has a villain prequel for that. But he Love also, that. he writes in Lit RPG and he wrote a trilogy about a, a character. It's a, he's a guy who, you know, it's Lit RPG. You guys either know it or you don't. It doesn't matter. But he writes this trilogy about this guy. And then there's a second trilogy that's about his daughter becomes the main character for that for that second trilogy. But the cookie works for both, which I think is super brilliant. Now he doesn't, brilliant. He doesn't have to write two. He just wrote the one which does some extra world building and references both stories and both characters. And that's it. He just had to write the one. Right. You can do that a lot when it's a, a world building heavy kind of a thing. Um, Ginevra's got three books now and still just the one cookie from that basically is a side story from book one. Um, although she's writing a second one and it's really good. Um, she's continuing the, um, for those who have not seen Ginevra's books, her, her cookie 
is uh, it's called Night Vet of the Living Dead. So it's a very clear homage to George Romero. Um, and the new cookie is a is an homage to um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I love that. Yeah, I don't even like, read that kind of book. So and smart. It's so smart. There's she's oh, so okay. smart. She's so so good, and I'm so jealous of her. Like she publishes pretty slowly, but I think it's because the books are like eight million words long. Um, and I'm just so jealous of like her ideas and the way she comes up with things. I'm almost never jealous of ideas. You're in the cult of Becca, so when I tell you, I'm number <laughs> one ideation. Like number one ideation isn't jealous of anybody's ideas. I don't have time. I'm busy having ideas. Um, right. But I, Jamie Davis is one. His ideas always seem so cool to me. And I'm always like, oh, I wish I thought of that. And um, Ginevra's another. I always wish oh. I thought of her ideas. So that cookie's amazing. Very convertible. It's very oh. long, but that's fine. Um, so I really love side stories. Um, but if you, if you can do nothing else, just write something real quick for the book that, that you're currently working on. So if you're going along and you write a really intense scene where two people have an argument or sexy times or something really some plot event that just turns the whole story on its end right just mm -hmm. take it and just judge it up so that it's from somebody else's point of view you already have all the events and all the dialogue so it's not all that hard uh judge that up and make that the link at the back like would you like to see this from this other point of view or this other you know whatever um you can always just get some quick thing from the book that you're writing Right. and worry about attracting the new subscribers, you know, down the road a little bit. At the very least, bake in, bake in, that's funny, bake in some kind of cookie <laughs> for the, for what you're, what you're currently doing. I love that. Bake in a cookie. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right. So for you guys, you must run, run out right now and get a newsletter ninja too. If you give a reader a cookie, it is chock full of all kinds of information. We have just like barely scratch the chocolate off the cookie right now. There's so much good stuff in there. There's also, you have a reader magnet in your, you have your own cookie in the book, right? What is the cookie that you're giving readers in the I book? I do, the nonfiction um, cookie, I actually don't remember the URL. It's newsletterninja.net slash 12 tips, but I can't I've, remember. I've, I've, got, I've got all that. I'm gonna take okay, care yeah. of that. Just tell us a little bit about it and I'll definitely link to it in the description of below so you guys so can check that, that out. that is just a list of, it, it was originally called 10 ways to ten ways to write emails people wanna open or whatever, but now it's 12 because I put a couple of bonuses in. Um, so it's just 12 things to keep in mind as you're writing emails that will make them more effective and make them emails that people want to read. Um, I'll pull out one tip for everybody who might not want to download it. You need to be using your pre-header text when you send out an email. There's a subject line, but then there's also pre-header text. If you put a little bit of clever micro copy in there, um, and it's very easy to do in MailerLite. It's very easy to mm -hmm. do in Active Campaign, And I think it's easy in ConvertKit. It didn't used to be, you had to code it, but I think it's actually just a field now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you see, when you receive email, you've got a subject line and then there's just a little bit of something, something. Make that something, something. Kind of like funny, clever, short, so people can see Sticky. it. It's just tips like that. Just little things that kind of boost the, uh, the, the enjoyment factor for your, and the deliverability and all that. Um, so they can download that there. Uh, just newsletterninja.net in general is kind of the best place to start if there's a new release like there is now. There's a link there. There's a link to some, like, I have like a really low priced uh, automation planner, just something to help people to plan their automations. And if I'm doing any like free trainings, which I do sometimes when I'm going to open a new course, I'll kind of try to judge people into some kind of free training. That's always just at newsletterninja.net slash training. We're actually doing a cookie thing starting next week, so that'll be fun. I know. I'm super excited about that. So I'm going to put all the links uh, down below in the description so that you guys do not have to remember all of that all at once. Because the thing is, I always want to test things out. So I'm always sure. testing things on that or testing things on clients if they'll let me, God bless them, which I think is really important too. Uh, just to harken back to something we talked about earlier, like there are people who disagree with me about certain facets of the stuff that I like teach or talk about. And I'm always like, you can't draw conclusions from your single data point. Like, I'm sure that's true. I don't like right. doubt you in the slightest, but you're one person. Right. I'm talking about an aggregate of like a dozen authors and across right. like four or five genres. And like, this is stuff I test really rigorously. So if I'm saying something is I'm not just pulling stuff out of my butt, like it's what actually works. So um, I'm always testing stuff and trying things out. And I am seeing 
people just love a quick, like very consumable cookie style reader magnet that they can just read in one sitting even and just be done. They have so many free books. Like they're like, do I really need another free book that's a hundred thousand words? Not really. Not um, really. But I would like to read this at the dentist's office. Yeah, like something that's just fast and and easy is like so good. And then if you've done it right, you've made that no brainer connection where they're like, yep, gonna have to have some more of that. Mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. happening. So, Love it. So. There really wasn't anything, you know, I mean, there are other newsletter books, but there really aren't any author newsletter books mm -hmm. that are, and it's so funny how weird people are about newsletters. Like, yes, right? They're so weird about it. One of the things I think that's really important, and it is actually a large part of the reason that I wrote the book, because my, the ability, like the number of students I can take on in any given year is actually very small. My courses are super high touch. And so they require a great deal of my time. So I actually do, you know, people are always like seats are limited. My seats are genuinely limited because I'm in your face every day. So I, there was a limit to the number of people I could talk to. And what I was just hearing over and over were these things that I needed to correct because I do love to be right. Um, and one of those things was all of the people who said, well, I don't like newsletters. And I'm like, but you're not your reader. So you don't know what they like. So right. you come out. Um, the single most highlighted sentence in Newsletter Ninja, because you can see that on your Kindle, you can see it right. in highlights, right? The single most highlighted sentence in there, so apparently a lot of people needed to hear it, is don't make business decisions based on your own consumer behavior. It doesn't right. matter if you like newsletters or, lot, or not. What matters is if the people who sign up for your newsletter like it, and of course they do, or they wouldn't have signed up. So right. stop thinking that way. Um, we just had a discussion in the, the Facebook group the other day about personalizing your subject lines because statistically, it's just a really good thing to do. Right. Know, open and rate. it's so easy now. Hey, um, Frank, blah, blah, blah. There was this whole discussion where people were like, I don't do it. I won't open those emails. And I'm like, what did I tell you? <laughs> A very wise woman once said, like, listen, guys, it doesn't matter whether you would open them. I'm telling you statistically, this is what it does. So do it. Right. See what the response is. Maybe your list hates it. I don't know because I don't know who you write to. Right. But if you do it and it works, you'll right. be really glad that you tried it. So right. th those are my two pieces of advice. Like, don't not do things because you don't like them and test everything split test if possible, everything, and then see what happens. What happens? Um, and that's, you know, that's that. Cause people really do have all these ideas about like, I wouldn't like a newsletter or I would only make like a newsletter if this, or if that, or I would only read a short one. I would only read a long one. I don't right. like dogs, like, you know, whatever. Don't, it doesn't matter what you like. It doesn't matter. Right. It only matters what your readers want, what they like, what yeah. they open, what they you click on. Start with, you know, the, the best practices, the conventional wisdom. Um, but I heard a very smart marketing person say conventional wisdom sometimes is just pooled ignorance, right? So <laughs> conventional wisdom, great. Start there because you got to start somewhere. You might as well, you know, well, everyone says, but test it. And then if it doesn't work, you go this way. And then if that doesn't work, you try over here. And so... Right. Um, you can't just do like what everyone says or even what I say. And I mean that sincerely, you can't just blindly do that because everybody's list is super individual. Truly everybody's sure. list is unique. Um, so you just have to do the things that resonate with your list. I think that's such great advice because a lot of times people feel like they have to do things in a certain way in order, like there are some things, clean your list, okay? So everybody has to do that. But what you send to your list, you don't want it to be like every other single list. So if you just want to say like, here's what I'm, this is the thing that I was always able to do when I, when I would get authors who did not necessarily want to do newsletters. To, I'll say like you're already doing reviews over on Goodreads. So now what I want you to do is post those reviews first to your newsletter because I'm like your newsletter gets the gold. They get your right. They get your your cover reveals first. They get everything first. Those people get rewarded for being on your newsletter. We love them the most. Even though we love all our fans, we love the ones we on love our newsletter. That's right. We do just a little bit. Just a little bit more. And so one of the things that I said is they're like, okay, well, I only put out one book a year. I'm like, we, we don't want to just message them when you have a book to put out. So like, talk about what you're reading, talk about what you're doing. And the, the writer that I told you about earlier, where I was like, oh, we should do like a case file on Bruno. 
he, this is a guy who, ne even though I've been begging him for years, never put out a newsletter. He had like 24 people on his newsletter list or something. But, but, oh my God, he's a natural. I'm like, okay, I'm, we're doing all these newsletter swaps. We're, we're got, got him set up with a cookie now. We're doing all this stuff. And I said, what I need you to do is write me a paragraph to two paragraphs. Like I'm going to take care of all the other things. I just want you to write this little bit. He writes like this great story about how he and Mary went to Vegas to his wife, Mary. He, they went to Vegas so he could sign some books for a, his new release. And it reminded me, him of being on like some California and they had put up, they had the California highway sign department make all these signs that said there was a narcotics checklist ahead, which is illegal in California. But what happened is they put video cameras up at the exits. So they have all these people cruising off the exits, throwing guns out the window and keeping <laughs> drugs. That's and a great he, story. I know. And I was like, oh my God. And then the next week he tells this great story about how he was like one of six kids and that his family was really poor and his mom would send him and all of his siblings to stay with like a an aunt or an uncle over the summer and he like had his paper bag full of clothes and he was on the greyhound bus at like nine and how he'd gone to the movies he saw truman capote's um in cold blood at nine years old Ooh, that's young <laughs> it was very young but here's the thing that same aunt and his cousin who went with him, who was seven at the time, murdered the husband, her, his uh, his favorite uncle. I know, right? I'm like, like we're he had nothing to talk about. He's gonna, what's he gonna tell a newsletter? Like I know, oh right. God. This was like nine he was nineteen when it happened. This is like the it was his favorite uncle. This is the reason he became a cop. And I'm like, we are saving this for the launch day. Like it's such a compelling story. And he he's just like full of them. That's one of the things that's awesome about working with authors as opposed to like, you know, internet marketers in general. Right. Out there in the, I call it the swamp because yeah. it's pretty swampy. Right. Out there in the internet marketer swamp, one of the things that they're always trying to teach each other, they're selling each other $900 courses on it, in fact, is right. how to tell stories in email, right? They're like, story is what sells. I'm already at that baseline. I'm working with authors. Right. If there's one thing we can do, it's tell a story. Tell stories, right. So, and we can pull them out of nowhere. Like you might have a hard time thinking, what will I write my newsletter about? But if instead you say, do I have any like fun stories that people might like? Yep, you do. And most of the writers I know are a little broken. We maybe didn't have an aunt that murdered our uncle, but we're all just a right. little broken. So there's something yeah. to pull from, like and Always. tell a really compelling story. Um, most of the authors I know are really funny, just kind of natively funny in a way that blessedly translates in writing because they're writers by craft and by trade. Right, um, right. We've really got an advantage with the storytelling email part. So thank you so much for being on today. You gave us so, so, so much good information. Uh, you guys definitely want to run right out and buy a newsletter at Ninja 1 and 2. Uh, 2 is the brand new one that just came out that kept me up half the night in the bathtub. And there are, uh, are links to both of those books down in the description below as well as uh, her little fantastic magnet about, uh, what was it, 12 different tips for writing emails people want to read. Or people something. actually want to read, which is good. Thank you so much for being here today. It has been completely awesome. And uh, I'm thrilled to finally meet you in person because like I said, I've been recommending your books for years. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. It was. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Tammy Lebrecht. If you want to write a book you're super proud of and get it published, this is definitely the channel for you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell uh, because I'm going to be producing a lot of great videos to help you do just that, including this one. So check it out. I'll see you over there.